Chi Uncle Gold Podcast. Five, four, three, two, one. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Uncle Gold Podcast. My name is Borna Zuber. I'm the host of the show and I started this to provide value to people, to everyone listening. Um, in this podcast, we talk about personal development and cool, interesting ideas that might be helpful and useful to people. Thank you for joining us today. Today I have Dusan Bogdanovic with me here. Uh, we met um, approximately one year ago at a personal development seminar and we clicked right away. Um, Dusan used to be uh, a professional basketball player and now he transitioned his career into personal development coaching and he's got a great story to tell so I'm looking forward to talking to him. Uh, Dusan, welcome to the Archigold podcast. Thank you. It's great, great, great to be here. So Lost yeah, guys, my... Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I introduce myself. Sure. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how your whole career kind of got started and how it um, switched? And um, there's also this idea of moving to Ireland that in, that's interesting to me. Um, so those are kind of the three big topics that I want to start off. Um, but before we go into it, um, I, I, I want to say that usually people tell me that I'm really, really tall. I'm like six four, six point three or 4, something like that. And then usually people look up and they're like, whoa, you're so tall. And I, I was always kind of like, yeah, it's it's not that big of a deal. And then I met Dushan, who's <laughs> like that towards me. And I was like, now I get it. <laughs> now that's what happens to everyone. <laughs> so yeah, um, let's start. Uh, how did you start your career, man? So yeah, I'm 6'11 for the people wondering now, since you said you're tall, 6'3", I'm 6'11. Uh, well, I mean, I was always tall. I was always like tallest in my class. And you know how it goes, like people start saying, Oh, you should try basketball you should try basketball and then when i was 13 uh, i remember back in my hometown in Vukovar in croatia there was this new team formed and my, my dad would just said you know just give it a try see how we get on you know you're tall let's just i mean no pressure but see how you get how you get on and like within a couple of months i really made like a quantum leap i did i improved so much and all of a sudden all the offers from teams from zagreb some international teams started coming and like uh, within in less than two years I managed to sign a professional uh, contract with the Real Madrid. So by the age of 15, I was already in Madrid training with like, it was top team, like best team in Europe. Like, and I, it was a huge quantum leap, especially like I come from a small village in Croatia. So it was a big, big deal for me. And like, I believe we'll, we'll cover a lot of this, like how I went from all this to the various injuries, some health issues, which ultimately made me quit my career like I was kind of forced to do it I, I wasn't able to do it anymore and now that I moved to Ireland I made this huge transition now I am a sports psychologist I'm a basketball coach and I also work with a person development company uh, with one of the Bob Proctor's top mentors and that's how I met Borna by the way yeah it was fun um that was a really cool evening um I was looking for things like that because I'm personally interested in uh, personal development and uh, I'm glad that uh, you remember Jonathan and Alexandra, they were also on the podcast. Um, they suggested that we um, joined them, and it was really, really fun. And I liked you and Yelena, of course, and we're going to have her on the podcast as well. Um, I'm also thinking of bringing Declan on. Uh, I think he would also have a lot of things to say. Um, so we'll, we'll see about that. But um, just to get back to uh, the basketball story, um, I also trained basketball for a bit. Um, I was also the tallest in the class and of course everybody pushes you into basketball and I had two friends with me and we joined the club I started going for a few tournaments but uh, we weren't that good we we're very young and we we're kind of not well coordinated you know so we didn't get great results uh, but it was really really fun afterwards I just played it like you know on courts for you know free time just to have some mm -hmm. fun with people that i would meet and stuff like that it was it'll be really really cool and i really like basketball um it's a dynamic game and it's very popular like when you look at the nba so many people watch that and it's so much stardom around it um but can you dig us a little bit deeper in it? how do trainings and preparations in these pro level games look like yeah, well, it's it, it is a lifestyle. It's I mean, people think, oh, it, but it's like a business. I remember like when I was so I, I went when I was 15, I was in Madrid and I was spent there a year and a half. But then there were some issues with the paperwork, contract, whatever. And then I actually I had to do some knee surgeries. I came back home and then I signed a professional contract with Partizan, a team from Belgrade, which is huge in, in Serbia. And I remember at that time, like I was under seven, under 17 and it was OK. It was like four or five hours a day training. 
but then I got one once I once I was 18, I signed a professional contract with with the with the senior team, and they competed they they competed in the Euro League, which is mm-hmm. top level in in Europe for basketball. And I remember like that was like six seven hours a day training training, and it's it's a commitment. Like it's mm-hmm. people don't don't see it that way. I know I know that people do work 40 hours a week, but you have no weekends because the weekends are when you have your games. So like I I remember people like Belgrade is very famous for nightlife. And I don't know, would you believe it, Borna, but I only went out once or twice while I was there. And I spent like three three years there. And it's just, you have no time. It's literally training, training, and then you're tired and you need to sleep well, you need to eat well. And it's a lot, and there's a lot of mindset there, which is something that I, I did lack at the time. And that's probably, that did cost me career in the end, but like, we'll talk about that more a bit later. But it is like physically, it is draining. You do sign contract. There's always that uncertainty, oh, where I'm going to be next year. I signed a contract for a year and I'll guess you never know what's going to happen next year. It all depends on your performances, how well you train. Then there's injuries, which I was very unlucky with. But look, I mean, these injuries can make you or break you really. And it, it is, look, it is it is a huge commitment. There has to be a huge passion. Like otherwise, like mm-hmm. six, seven hours training a day, if you're not passionate about it, it's very, very hard to, yeah. to stay in that. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, it's, it's very rewarding if you're, if you're good at it. Mm-hmm. Um, Dushan, you're uh, training kids now uh, in basketball. Um, mm-hmm. Tell me, when I think back, one of the biggest problems that I felt on an emotional level was that I didn't know anyone in the club that where I was training. And then, the, the well, I would knew the, the two friends that I started training with, but I didn't know kind of how to uh, get closer to other kids and start communicating with them more. And it was a strange feeling when you did a a uh, ball pass you looked at the person and you kind of felt like there was no connection there um, how do you overcome that gap how do you bring the team together yeah well it's always a tricky one like there, there's a huge difference between coaching senior teams where it's mostly tactical so you bring players from everywhere and then you just set up a place and then you train but it's different when it's underage kids and that's something that you have to be really like it's not, it's not so much about technical and tactical side, but you have to be more from a psychology side. You have to approach that way. And like you have, if there's a new kid, you have to, like your job is to introduce the new, the new kid to all the team. And like it is coaches or whoever is the mentor for them, whatever you want to call it. Like it is your job to slowly introduce them in a team. And mm-hmm. like it's not easy. Like you might have some kids who are not very friendly or whatever, but you have to be like that's I, I do believe that when I became a parent, my whole basketball coaching, this whole side of the whole this whole psychological side did really improve because I knew how kids react. Like I have a like she's only two now, Maria, my daughter, but mm-hmm. it really helped me a lot. Where before when I was in Croatia, I had my own basketball academy, but I was only 21, 22. I had no kids, like it was very hard for me to understand their psychology. But now I do, and it is your job, like it won't. They won't click straight away, but it is your job to slowly introduce them. And I mean, it is a process, but if you're good at it, if you have an understanding of how a child's mind works, it, it makes it so much easier. Mm-hmm. Um, do kids get competitive very easy or is it something you have to work on with them? Some of them, yeah. There some like some of them are born with it. Like it's 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 so funny, but I mean, yeah, you have to control that. Like sometimes in a group, you you might have a kid who's very competitive and then some other kid is just there for fun and it is your job. And it, it, I mean, it is hard, like to be honest with you, but it mm. is very rewarding in the end. But yeah, you have to, you kind of have to make sure there's a balance. But look, I mean, I've done loads of camps, basketball camps here in, in, in Ireland. Like what I mostly focus now with my own business is I don't do that anymore as such because uh, what I found is like Ireland is not so big in basketball. Like, being honest like it's compared to Croatia Serbia it's not so big and most of the basketball camps are mostly babysitting in a way I don't know do you understand that but and so what I did is I said okay I I do have experience I have the knowledge in all this I know how how the pros train so what I I started the DB basketball that's the name of my of my company so what I do is I focus on elite basketball coaching Mm-hmm. So what I do is it's one-on-one or it's literally like elite kids who play for, for Irish national team, but there's no babysitting. This is like, okay, guys, we have two or three hours. Let's get into it. And that's the way I, I prefer to work. I don't mind babysitting, but that's not something that I would like to do for the rest of my life. I do want to focus on 
on the really elite and then obviously doing the sports psychology which is a huge part of what i do now awesome um can you tell us a little bit how this whole story with you coming to ireland came about uh, i can tell you from my side um i was changing a few jobs and i felt that i wasn't paid enough for the amount of time that i was working and then my girlfriend got an offer from an irish company and we decided to move um and i just went for it because i felt it was kind of my time to switch things up and change things and um a lot of people gave me some good feedback that there are lots of opportunities in ireland uh, and i kind of followed that and we moved over um end of 2018 so that's like two years now in ireland here what's your story so my story is that i i quit my career back in 2000 14 or 15, not sure. So anyway, throughout my career, I was I was actually one of the top 20 prospects in the world in my age. I'm 1993, so I'm 27 now. And I was one top 20, and I was invited to this Jordan brand classic, which is like the top basketball camp in the world for underage kids. Awesome. And it was all great for me. I was the superstar, played for best teams. I was earning loads of money. But then there was two serious knee injuries, which did set me back for over a year. Then there were some health issues that ultimately, like it, it happened, like it went for a few years. And then I was, I was at the age of 23. My whole focus was basketball. So now at the age of 22, I was, no, I was 22, I believe. I didn't finish school. Basketball was very you know, uncertain. So I said, okay, this can go like this anyway. I need to get some education. I need to start doing something with my life. So I went back home to a small village in Croatia. My dad is a farmer. So I spent a few years helping out my dad. I knew straight away that's not what I want to do. I mean, it was fine helping him out. Once I got, once I did get some education, like I don't have any college degree, it's just high school basically. Um, so I decided to do something with my life. I met Yelena, who's my wife now, and we decided to try something else. Like we came to Ireland, just see how's life in Ireland. At least I wouldn't have to work on a farm, which was a, a huge step forward for me. And off we go, like, I mean, we started, I started, it was my first job actually, I, here in Ireland, that I started working in retail. It was my first ever job in life because I spent my whole life training basketball and that was all that I was doing. And then all of a sudden you have to switch from being a professional basketball player to going, waking up at 5 a.m. to go to work at six. I was a huge transition, but look, I mean, that's, those days are gone now, thank God. And doing, I'm doing something that I love now and it's, it's much better, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's my story. I just, didn't want to spend any any more days feeding pigs in Croatia. Being 6'11", feeding pigs <laughs> wasn't my dream, to be honest. And I decided to take matter into my own hands. Mm -hmm. There was a bit of paperwork to be done. And just, like, I had, I have uncle here in Trilly in, in Ireland, which helped me a lot. So we spent the first three months at his place, and then we got jobs, and then we moved into our apartment. And that's that's basically the story. Cool, cool. Um, how did that transition happen? Like. I feel that because of 2020 and everything that happened this year, that a lot of people are thinking of changing their career, going into another direction, learning something new, upskilling themselves. Uh, what are some of the things that you could recommend since you've already gone through that process? Yeah, well, what I learned last year is um, you have to take matter into your own hands. Like I remember like we, my, myself and Yellen invested, we, it was five figure investment by the way, to start working with this mentor of ours and start learning this Bob Proctor stuff. It happened in February and in March, we went into lockdown. So obviously my whole plans for basketball were kind of very uncertain at the time. And I was scared. I mean, I was, I mean, I was very scared. But what I learned is once you really do regain control over your thoughts and once like we study, like I study every day, by the way, for hour and a half, two hours, that's part of my routine now. But people do think like you can't let the outside circumstances affect you so much. Like they do. I mean, I still like my basketball is not happening at the moment. Basketball is completely canceled in Ireland this year. So look, I am affected, but I do some other things. I'm, I'm also investing in financial markets. That's another source of income that I do now. Like I'm fine. Like if this lockdown goes for another six months, it doesn't bother me that much. So and that's what everyone can do, but we always let the circumstances affect us. And that's something that I would suggest to everyone, like you need to take matter into your own hands. Don't let the outside circumstances control you. And like the best way to do it is really to start studying yourself, studying who you are. That's why I'm so big in personal development because it really changed my life. I'm not talking this just to 
I mean, I, I've seen the effects it had on my life and my marriage and everything, but it not happened until I made that until I made that decision. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's learning, improving yourself, mm -hmm, and mentorship as well. Um, how does one find a mentor? What would you recommend? Because I heard that there's a lot of people online who just like scam people for their money, uh, but there are also like really really good coach coaches that want to help people. Uh, what are some of the things that people should look for in a mentor? No, that's a very good question. That's something I always tell people is just take a look at their results. Mm -hmm. That's that's all I can say. Like there's 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 loads of people out there with uh, loads of knowledge. People have read two thousand like thousands of books, and look, they they might have all the knowledge, but if the results are not there, there's something wrong. And that's something that I look for. Obviously, you want that mentor to really resonate with you. Like we know, like we have Declan now. People love Declan. Irish people love Declan because they resonate with him. There's a lot of American coaches, and I don't know what is it like. Just Irish people do resonate more with Declan because he's an Irish local guy. But it's not only that. Look, obviously, it is important that you resonate with this guy. But I would take a look at this person's results. Like I know, like Declan's story with the house, and like it was it was very emotional. And when I saw that, I was like, I, I I see what this guy has done in his life, what this material has done for his life. I said, I want the same. And I mean, it wasn't easy enough to make a decision, but that's that's what I would suggest. Like, I talk to a lot of coaches, business coaches, uh, life coaches, this and that. Like, there's a lot of people out there, which is fine, but their results are not great. Like, how can you expect, why would you go to a life coach if his life is not in order? I mean, I hope that that makes sense. So I always say results are the name of the game. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you tell me when you were uh, learning and studying about personal development, who are some of the people um, that you looked up, studied from, read about? Um, I can also tell you my favorites, like I'm a huge fan of Tony Robbins. Um, and in the last two years, I've listened a lot to Gary Vee. I don't know if you know him, um, but I want to hear your side of the uh, story. Who are some of the people that can inspire and give you food for thought? I actually never, I, I was never big into personal development until I met Yelena and then I went to her place for the first time and I saw a vision board. I didn't even know what it is. Mm -hmm. And then she started to talk about the secret and this and that. And then she introduced me to Robin Sharma. I don't know if you hear about him. And But then I, I spent, I, I read all of his books, books probably and I spent good time studying his material. And then it kind of faded away when this whole basketball thing was happening, moving to Ireland. We did have, Joe, you know, like some, some of the results were going up once we were studying and like this whole law of attraction thing but then i got my job maria was born things started kind of started going downwards and that's when we discovered like i, I knew bob proctor from the secret but to be honest i never read any of his stuff or watched any of his youtube videos and then when this seminar came up here in in Trilly, when it said oh it's it's one of the bob proctor's consultants i said oh, okay let's let's go and actually yeah i went i never went there so i only met Declan afterwards but yeah robin sharma was my first guy no i absolutely love I Bob Proctor, I, I studied that because that's most, I have most of his material like through studying with Declan, but I love Tony Robbins. I really resonate with him. Like he's six foot, six, six, seven guy, I think. Yeah. Massive. That's, I, if that, that's my, that's part, that's, I'm working on looking like Tony Robbins within a few years. That, that, that's, that's a big goal of mine. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, all right. Um, since I mentioned Gary Vee earlier, can you tell me a little bit about social media? Like I've seen you and Elena being very active there. Uh, what's your general opinion on social media and people using it? Yeah, well, I think it's a great tool. Like I, to be honest, I didn't have Facebook till last year. Like I had Facebook when I was younger and then I just deactivated my profile. It was gone for, I don't know, five years. And then last year, and I only activate, I came back on Facebook just because one of the ways Declan does his uh, coaching calls is through this Facebook group. So it would be kind of good to have an access to that group. And that's the only reason I came back. And right now I mostly use it for business. I don't like to share my own personal stuff, but I generally do think it's a great thing. People, there's people making, making a living from social media, like um, advertising different products, doing this and that. And it's, it's great. What I don't like is there's always these two sides. You have the your social media and then there's reality and often people do focus on this social media side where everything is perfect but reality is a bit different and then we have all this there's all there's a lot loads of insecurity now in the world because i don't know like i have a daughter now and like a few years time she'll be on social media probably and she'll see all these 
perfect women in the world. They're all perfect makeup. And then she'll think that she's not good enough or whatever. And that's something that we have to be careful. Like we always see the good side. Like Instagram will always show the good side. It'll never show the bad side. And that's something that we have to be aware. Like even these happiest, richest people in the world, they have their bad days. And that's something that we all need to be aware of. But generally I do love, I mean, I, 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 I advertise my own businesses through social media. I think it's a great tool, but as long as you can control what you post and as long as you can control your emotions while you're watching other people post their stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, was it hard for you to uh, learn how to use social media for your business? Yeah, well, it was, yeah. I'm still not an expert now, to be honest with you. I think Alexandra, who was a guest in your podcast, she helped me a lot. Um, especially with Instagram, with all the hashtags and this and that. I, I wouldn't be ex expert in it, but and look, I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with maybe paying someone to run your social media account. People do that. If you're not good at it, the way I see it is if I'm great at coaching kids basketball or coaching people basketball or doing, working with them as a sports psychologist, and this is where I focus my energy and my time, I don't mind if I earn enough from it, I'm just going to pay someone to run my social media. And that's absolutely fine with me. I don't want to do everything if I'm not good at it. So yeah, but again, Alexandra, thank you so much. Now <laughs> going live here on Borna's podcast. Thank you so much for showing me the hashtag. It really helped a lot. <laughs> awesome. We'll, we'll thank Alexandra. Um, she, she really has a lot of people on, on Instagram and she's doing a really good job. Her, her posts improved a lot in the last year. It really looks amazing. Um, do you use uh, LinkedIn? It's um, more of a professional version of, let's say, Facebook, but it also has kind of its own thing. And personally, I, I think it's the best social platform out there because there's no like cat videos or pictures of food, you know, people post everything either motivational or business related and I love it. I just spend most of my time there. And of course, YouTube for obvious reasons, right? Um, but tell me your thoughts on LinkedIn. I actually have my LinkedIn, but I haven't checked it in, I would say, two, three weeks. I just can't figure out that um, platform at all. Like, I would love to, and I, I am going to hire someone to show me the ropes. But uh, it's great. No, it's a great tool. I know Declan uses it a lot for his personal development stuff. And I would love to be more on it. Like, I just put, like, with, through my sports psychology business, I see a lot of people adding me as a friend, or I don't know how you say that, mm -hmm. connection request, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. Psychologists from all over the world. It is powerful stuff but I just need to figure out. I, I'm not sure what kind, I know it's different compared to Facebook or Instagram. I just need to figure out what kind of posts people like to see there and all that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I like I like when people separate Instagram, Facebook and LinkedIn. So and I, I, I do love that because TikTok is huge now. I know Yana just went on TikTok there. That's something that I'll probably never have, but she's doing great. It's like five posts. There's only like thousands and thousands of likes. So as long as she's happy, I'm happy. Um, but yeah, no, LinkedIn is, is absolutely great. I, I need to get someone to really show me that. Um, I'll show you afterwards. And uh, because I, I've spent literally eight hours every day in my last job working on LinkedIn and I played around with posts. Although the company where I worked in wasn't that enthusiastic about um pushing LinkedIn, you know, it was more like being used, but not a hundred percent. I would do a normal post where I would take a simple picture of, let's say my desk and write like five sentences about my thoughts on like mindsets uh, related to work, like how positivity is important and things like that. And it will get like 500, 600, 1000, sometimes two or 3000 views uh, on a simple post like that. And then I started doing some videos, you know, where I would literally give some updates on like, hey, it's Monday and today I'm doing this, you know, it's, it was kind of a vlog, but it was like a one minute vlog. Um, it would also get like hundreds and thousands of views. And um, I think LinkedIn is a really good spot now. If you want to explore that option, I'm happy to talk more about it. Um, I haven't done marketing on um, LinkedIn, so I don't know how to place an ad, but that's one of the ideas for 2021 to um, try to market the podcast a little bit there because I think it will bring um, valuable insights to people who are in business. And since most of the talks that I have here are related around business, I think I think it will be useful to people. So um, literally, there's a guy in Croatia. You maybe if, well, if you haven't been on LinkedIn, you probably haven't seen him, but you might have read it in the newspapers about a digital nomad visa. 
his name is Jan de Jong. He's a businessman. He is originally from the Netherlands. He moved over to Zagreb and um, he married a Croatian woman there. And he, so he settled his, there for the last 20 years and he's big on Croatia. He's like, yeah, let's go. Let's uh, resurrect the economy you know, and all of that stuff. <laughs> um, so he started multiple companies, made a lot of money. And um, last year he wrote a post on LinkedIn, um, which is kind of like an open letter to the Croatian government. And he talked about the digital nomad visa, where for instance, um, you got the Irish uh, citizenship and you have your business here, but you want to spend more than three months in Croatia working from there. You, could, you couldn't do it until now because the um, tourism visa is only for three months, right? Mm -hmm. And afterwards you have to go back. So now they're changing the legislation and they will introduce a digital nomad visa so people can stay up to a year. And he got like 30,000 connections on LinkedIn just because of that. And like half of Croatia is following him. Like everyone, did, everybody knows him and he's a really cool guy. So uh, that's kind of the power of LinkedIn there. Um, and it was like a simple post, but he does posts regularly. And he's also big on Gary Vee and loves the idea of, you know, like reaching people through content and sending your message and idea out there. So um, I, I had him, um, I think it was two episodes ago, or three. Um, it was the tenth episode on the podcast, so I really love chatting to him. And he's also big on mindset and uh, personal development, so um, that that's very valuable. And uh, I'm I'm literally going to start doing a lot more um, posts on LinkedIn in 2021, just because I see the results. And even though in 2020 I didn't do it that much, I already saw how many people added me, and you know it creates clout and all of that. So I'm just going to continue with that a lot stronger and I'm sure it's going to be great for the podcast. Um, but LinkedIn is not everything, right? Um, TikTok is a completely different game, as you <laughs> mentioned. Um, I see how Yelena would use it for her Zumba classes. Uh, I think that works phenomenally on uh, TikTok because there's a lot of dancing there. But you will be surprised what you could do with basketball, man. I've seen so many videos of people doing trick shots, uh, practicing dribbling, um, just like uh, bouncing two balls at the same time, then switching hands, um, things like that. There are so many cool videos that you can do there that are really, really popular um, because people go through a lot of content on TikTok. They kind of go through it really, really fast. So it get, gathers views really, really fast. Um, you should definitely. So it's, it's only for that. Like I've seen, like Declan, like you know Declan, he started using it for like his mindset, the personal development business, and he put up, he puts up a video of him meditating or going for a walk or some of like you know those reels. He does those reels yeah. and then he's studying, writing stuff, and it's like thousands of likes. And he only started like a week or ten days ago, so it is a huge platform. Once I maybe figure it out, I might. I might venture there a small bit, but yeah. for now, I try, I try to stay away from too many social media. <laughs> I get that. Uh, I love Declan's, um, what are they called? Uh, time lapses. Yeah, he, he does yeah. a lot of time lapses in the last time. Yeah. It's cool, yeah. It's cool, actually. Like People actually love it like because they, they see this guy writing every day, studying, and they're like, what is that you study? And what, what you write all the time? And then he starts mm -hmm. chatting with them because it's, it's funny. Like, I don't think... I don't think a lot of people, I would say 90 something percent of people don't study every day. When I say study, like read every day, you write every day, you read your goals. Like I, I would say a lot of people don't even have goals. And that's something that we do on a daily basis. And that's why people do get the results. But that's why people are interested in, in those um, time lapses and reels. I don't know how they're called. I think they're reels on Instagram. So yeah, yeah he studies, studies every day. And I try to do hour and a half, two hours a day at least really um, especially in the morning it really sets up your day in the right vibration mm -hmm. yeah um i love that I, look, I do stuff like that all the time as well tell me when we're on the topic of goals it's a big topic usually in december and january because everybody sets new year's goals and everybody has new year's decision and the whole new year new me and then around february it kind of goes away um what would you say is the most important thing for people to kind of stick with their goals, not just for one month, but, you know, to kind of stick to their goals for a longer time? Yeah, I, I actually, I recorded a video on my own profile, I don't know, a few days ago about that, maybe like a few weeks, myself and Yana, was, we talked about New Year's resolutions and why they don't stick. And I have to tell you, like, I'm actually glad that I don't work in the job where I was previously. 
because that's what happened every December and every January. It was like I was there for over four years and every January was the same story. Operation transformation, all the weights and protein shakes and everything. And like, it's even, if you go to that store now, it's the same story. Like people still believe um, it's going to happen this year. And I, I'm actually, I'm sick of <laughs> looking at these things and watching people not stick with, with their new year's resolutions. But I know, I know the, why, why is that is because that's something that we teach is this paradigm thing. And that's literally how are you programmed? So when a person says, okay, so now it's December, I'm going to eat, I'm going to relax over Christmas, but then in January, I'm going to start eating healthy. I'm going to start working out. I'm going to start reading. And then they do like there's they make that decision in a way and then they start they stick to it for a week two or three maybe but then if it's not part of your paradigm and that's something that as i said i don't i don't want to go into it too much but it's literally how are you programmed so if you're not programmed to eat healthy if you're not programmed to work out every day if you're not programmed to read every day you won't do it like you'll do it for a week or two while there's a bit of motivation there might be some group accountability there might be a few friends doing it but by the end of January, you're all going to quit unless you change that paradigm. So what we say is people are treating the symptoms, but unless you treat the primary cause, which is this part of your subconscious mind, the paradigm, there's no permanent change. Like when you say, okay, I, I did drink a lot over Christmas. I ate a lot and now I put on some weight. I'm going to start working out. So what you're doing is you're treating the symptom. So that's the symptom. Like you're, you have this bad paradigm and the symptom of it is you gain some belly fat, you ate a lot, you're not in shape and you're treating the symptom, but you're not treating the primary cause of those bad results, which is your paradigm and how are you programmed. And like this paradigm is a powerful stuff. I could talk about it for three hours. Like it's funny, people don't understand how we are literally programmed to do things that we do on, on, on a day, everyday basis. And that's what I, I said in that video, the best new year's resolution you can make is to start studying really start studying paradigms and learn how to change them and start changing them because otherwise you'll be like in a hamster wheel back in february you'll be your old self maybe even end of january you'll you'll go back to your old habits and that's what you don't want to do and then again 2022 yeah new year new me and then next year and next year and just never change like you see people saying this for years making new year's resolutions which don't stick and it's all because of paradigm mm -hmm. yeah um what was the biggest biggest paradigm shift for you in your life i remember that mine was when um i started working in a hotel and i fell in love with sales and i met a lot of sales people a lot of business people and i was impressed by how efficient they were and how cool they looked in their suits and going to meetings and all of that and i wanted a piece of a cake and i realized how different sales is radically from working at a reception where you don't have targets and goals and things that you have to achieve and in a short period of time like like my whole perception about the job changed uh, the one thing that pulled me through kind of was the whole personal development thing where i would self-motivate myself um but it, it's a radically different job and i know it changed my perception on like how to approach work how to prepare for work because when you're going to the reception you basically don't have a lot of preparation there you just come there start to see who's coming to the hotel that day what you have to do and that's it for sales you have to um, prepare a bit more if you want to be efficient right and uh, i know it, it changed my way of uh, working and approaching things and i would stay longer hours and work more and put in a lot more effort can you give an example where you changed your paradigm the most yeah well it's similar to yours like i had i worked in this retail job for over four years and as you said it's you clock in you do your work you go home now some days you're, there, you're in there longer some days some days are shorter but you don't have to think you're just it's more it was mostly physical or it was supermarket so i mean you know and then all of a sudden i went through this whole personal development thing and i started studying and i knew i can do better and i did quit that job ultimately but again it was a huge shift of okay, I don't wake up every morning at five now to go to work, but I will wake up at five to study because, and what we learned, I wasn't, I, I do sales as well. Now part of my job here is with Indexland's company is sales. Like I get on a call, like I don't like to call it sales really because it's more of a discovery call. We, people are interested in Bob Proctor's work. They get on a call. I discover, is this the right fit for them? If it is, I will offer them what we do. If not, I'm just going to wish the best of luck. And that's, I mean, it is a sales in a way. And what I've learned is it's 95% mindset. 
five percent is the what we call mechanics. So people talk about all these sales scripts, and there's all these different like Jordan Belfort. It's called whatever straight line or something like there's there's all these people out there, and which is absolutely fine. Like you have to have some order. There has to be some script, but it's not script that sells. It's you who sells, and it's ninety five percent mindset. And like it's it, with, with most of the things. Like I'm I'm in forex now. I'm doing a bit of forex trading, and I'm with this group here. And now guys are. They, are, they have a whole system, they have these indicators and whatever, but what separates them is the mindset. Like I told them, like there's guys who are earning thousands a day and there's guys who are struggling and they're quitting. And they're all using the same charts, they're all using the same broker, they're all using the same indicators, but what's different is that mindset. Like the same with sales, there's millions and millions of sales, sales, salespeople in the world mm-hmm. and they might be in the same company, same position, selling same product. And like what's the difference and then one person is doing great and the other person is struggling and that's that's the mindset so it is it's not easy like honestly it was easier for me to as in physically it was harder to wake up and go to work but when i think it's not easy to work on your mindset that's what a lot of people don't want to think to talk about especially men i have to say this that women are more open-minded like in our mastermind groups it's 90 percent are women they're more open-minded and I'm, I'm perfectly fine saying that men are not like we, we can be a bit stubborn. We, we think we know everything or especially we have family. Oh yeah, we have to provide for family. Yeah. We have to do this. We have to do that. And sometimes and we awesome. need to be more. And yeah. The, um, idea of like um, going against authority, like who's this guy trying to tell me something, right? Like I yeah, know. Yeah. Best. yeah, exactly. Exactly. And like, we need to be more open-minded and, I said, I went live yesterday on my on my Facebook profile and I said, if your method, so just take a look at your life. If your method doesn't work or if you're not entirely happy with your life, why not try someone else's? That's how Bob Proctor got into personal development. Like he was broke, he was alcoholic and he met a guy and this guy handed him the Think and Grow Rich book. And he said, look, your method is obviously not working. You're broke and you're single, you're alcoholic, your life, you're going nowhere in your life. So why not try mine? And that's how Bob Proctor started reading Thinking Grow Rich book. That's how he got into personal development. And that's how he, he changed his life. He's a millionaire now. He had built his world, built this worldwide company. And that's what I suggest to everyone else. Like, if you're not happy, just try this. Like, you don't have to do it for months, but try for a few days, see how, how you like it. But yeah, men need to be more open-minded. That's, that's, that's my point. I agree. Especially, like, I think like we, like we come from Croatia, myself and Borna and, we're very specific people there. Like we're very stubborn. We're stuck in our own ways in a way. I think like uh, this whole personal development concept is still unknown to a lot of people in Croatia. Like my parents, like I talk, when I talk to my dad about what I do now, he has no understanding for what I do. Now he does support me because there's that love. I mean, he's my dad, but he'll never probably understand that I, I earn much more money than he'll ever earn just by sitting home in front of my laptop. Yeah, because he's literally raised like he's a farmer. He's the most hardworking guy ever, but he's raised to believe that the only way to earn money is to work hard, and it's yeah. not true. So, yeah. and there's always that lack of understanding. But look, I'm fine. I love him, and I'm gonna let him do his own thing, and he's gonna let me do my own, and we're all one big happy family. Of course, uh, I kind of get the same feel when I start doing YouTube videos, and then everyone's like, "What?" You know, and. Um, there's this barrier between uh, old generation and new generation always when there's uh, some kind of new technology involved as well. Like I'm sure that your dad doesn't know a lot about social media as much as you do or about laptops and stuff like that. Like my mom was really, really against everything. And then she, she worked as a teacher in a school. And then as the digitalization came, everything went online and she had to start using computers more and more. And she was like getting more and more depressed about it. She was like, oh no, like now we're going to give grades to kids online. And she was struggling with that. And I know that my dad had to help her. Um, But now, um, since I'm not there, she loves seeing pictures and videos of me online. So she spends a lot more time on social media. Now she loves it. Now she's, uh, you know, started using Facebook a lot more. And she even has an Instagram account, which if you told me me five years ago that she would have that, I would laugh at you. I would say, no way. So uh, things change, of course. And I do think, uh, coming back to your previous point, I think that um, hard work is not everything. I think there's a lot to say about uh, mindset there, um, how it affects everything. And I really do notice 
um, the back to the even more previous point how some people do the same job but they get a different radically different result and I always admired people that were really really good at their job they got really really good results um, tell me when someone is getting into sales personal development all of these things that affect their lives let's take the personal development here for a minute when somebody's starting their personal development journey what would you recommend to them as like the first few steps to take maybe even the first step or the first two or three steps to do to kind of make their um introduction into personal development easier because i do highly agree that not enough people know about this people feel that life is fixed and how it is that's how it is right and that there's no chance of anything changing like that um i disagree i think that a lot of things can be changed and especially if you find quality information that can teach you how to change your life um but tell me if, if there's someone listening right now who's thinking about going into personal development and never did it and doesn't know where to start what would you recommend i would recommend going on youtube first and finding a mentor that really you resonate with like there's all these there's Tony robbins there's Bob Proctor, um, Robin Sharma, there's like, I mean, there's thousands of gurus out there. Just find one that you really resonate with. Once you find that guy, like what I would, I would suggest is going one step further and finding a mentor. When I say mentor, don't stick with YouTube because what I find, it rarely gives a permanent change. Like you do need, like there is a reason why Bob Proctor, like there's a lot of, lot, load of Bob Proctor free stuff on YouTube, but he also, he's a millionaire. He has consultants all over the world. And like, if it wasn't necessary to have a mentor, Declan would be probably out of job. I mean, you know, so again, I would suggest like going slowly, not overwhelm, start by half an hour a day, hour a day, find, just Google through different people, different mentors, see one that really resonates with you. Like, as you said, you love Tony Robbins. That's fine. You like Gary Vee. You stick with the two of them, but like you wouldn't go now and find 20 more and follow them all because you would just overwhelm you, yourself. So stick with one or two, and then if you are serious about it, get if you are serious about getting more into it, find someone like I mean, if you resonate with Bob Proctor, yeah, Declan is one of his top consultants, so you would have him as a mentor. And I would like I would suggest Tony Robbins has his own consultants and all these other people. But yeah, don't think it's a huge thing. Read books. Like I love reading books. That's something that everyone like. There's books are dirt cheap now. Get a book and start reading. Like. But again, I think a lot of people don't even read the way it's supposed to be read. So, but again, look at some other topic. Yeah, do start, start with YouTube. It's free. Everyone has access to YouTube, but don't overwhelm yourself. Try 15, 20 different gurus, find one or two that really resonate with you and start there, but don't mm -hmm. stick with YouTube forever. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, books. What's your favorite book, Dushan? Signs of Getting Rich. Mm. Awesome. Um, Wallace D. Wallace Waffles. D. Waffles. Yeah. Waffles. Um, would you recommend it as a starter book of, to someone who's new to personal development or? Yeah, it's quite, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's hundred pages. It's not, um, it really shows you like the effect of your thoughts on your, on your outside world. And it's not heavy. Like I like thinking grow rich, like it's a bit longer book, but I would like size of getting rich is great. If you, if you want to start. Yeah. Even yeah. like Robin Sharma stuff that I started with, was very uh, beginner friendly. It was, there wasn't anything um, major or no, but yeah, start signs of getting rich is amazing book, guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I like I, I actually what I do sometimes like I did the speed reading course, so like I can read now eight hundred something words in a minute. So what I do sometimes when I have a spare hour, like I do, I, I need less than an hour to read that book. So I, I I read that book every few days when I have some free time. I would just take it. It takes me like 45, 50 minutes. I read the whole book and I'm like okay. This set, sets up my vibration for the day. Awesome. Um, I did speed reading when I was in high school and I never stuck with it. Um, we, I loved it then and I never kind of got into the practice of doing it. Uh, I know that my worth per minute, of course, went up, but um, it's, it's a certain level of practice that you have to put in to kind of get the maximum results and I didn't. So I think I would have to redo the course or you can give me a crash course to kind of remind me. Uh, but it definitely sounds uh, awesome when you put it like that. <laughs> I read a book every few days <laughs> just to kind of remind myself, yeah, I should do that more often. I kind of loved um, audiobooks always more because I love doing stuff and then stuff with it um, or multitasking as they call it, right? Um, so I would wash the dishes and then 
it I don't know, takes me an hour. So I would listen to one hour of a audio book or like clean the house or go for a run. And I would use all that time to kind of listen to something useful. And I really did learn a lot. I was joking with my friend that I got another college on YouTube just through listening to audios of people talking about stuff. Um, and personally, that's something that I would recommend to a lot of people. That's one of the main reasons why I actually started the podcast. Because I feel like, look, man, you're walking your dog for an hour or two. You're not doing much, right? You're relaxing. All right. But if you're not like an overachiever, you're probably not pushing yourself enough and you're not using your time wisely. And you know how much people watch TV and stupid things that don't bring you a lot of value in life. So I always look for how can you use your time more efficiently? And that's one of the simplest ways that I love, you know, like it's, it's just like easy. You put your headphones on and you learn something while you're doing it. And it's amazing. Yeah. And like YouTube is full of audiobooks. Like you'll find Think and Grow Rich audiobook. There's full audiobook there. There's condensed version. I believe Science of Getting Rich audiobook is also there. Like YouTube is, is phenomenal. Like it's a lot of free stuff. As long as you can find it, as long as you're looking for the right things. And if you can use it the right way, yeah, it's it's powerful stuff. Like I know there's Audible as well, which is paid subscription service. But I would start with YouTube because it's free. It's there. Everyone can use it. Yeah, of course. Um, I like Audible. Um, I think I'm going to do a video on that one as well, but uh, let's let's leave that for another time. It's it's um, basically better in my opinion because you get the full audio book and sometimes on YouTube you can't find the full audio book. You can find like reviews and people talking about it. Um, so yeah, Audible might be better if you prefer to like read book read a book from cover to cover. Mm. Um, tell me, Dushan, I wanted to ask you about your daily routine. Like, you obviously changed your life a lot in the last year. How does your daily routine look like today? How is it different from before? And what do you focus on throughout the day? Um, what are some of the things that you do, let's say, from the start until the finish? Yeah, so I, I wake up at 5 a.m. That's I like that because my daughter wakes up around 7. So that gives me two hours of peace and quiet. And that's something I would I, I, I would recommend this for I don't care single, you do you have a family whatever it is wake up at five like there's nothing like I know it takes a while to get used to it but once you do like your mind is more receptive at that time and and if you meditate there's no better time to meditate than 5 a.m or right before you go to sleep that's something that I do like I don't meditate that much but if you do like 5 a.m would be literally the best time there's a few books on it but I don't talk about it right now but what I do is wake up at five I study so when I say study, I, I studied this Bob Proctor material. Like it's, I have like a back office. I'm a member on, on, on his website and I have some lessons that I study. There's workbook that I, like I do a lot of writing. I, I like to write down, I start the day with my gratitude. So I write down 10 things I'm grateful for. And then I do a few other things as in rewriting my paradigm and I rewrite my goals. We started the Serenity Group just recently, like this week. So we write out the chapter from a book called As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. So we write out the serenity chapter and there's like hundred and something people in, in the, in the group now, and they show up every morning and every evening people rewrite that. And there's, it's something that Bob Proctor recommends. That's something, not something that I came up with or Declan came up with. That's something that comes from Bob Proctor. And so I like all that. I mean, I like, I like to read. I like to read at least a half an hour, hour a day, which again, when you, when I read at my pace, it's, it's literally like, it could be a book a day or it could be, few books a week but uh yeah that's something that i and then also like we we do the coaching calls with declan we're still clients so we spend another hour of listening to him on his coaching calls so yeah like morning is for me like i, I like to do most of my stuff in the morning mm -hmm. because it really sets my day so i'm gonna study for an hour and a half too i might do i might go into my forex thing trade a small bit get my profits there and then i, I like to spend time with my family mm -hmm. if there's any meetings calls yeah look that's fine maria is going to crash anyway but i like i like to do most of my stuff in the morning like and it's actually funny like i we we don't work as as much as people think like it's it's just you know once once you change that whole um like i changed my whole life basically i don't i have I don't have a job as such anymore it's self-employed it's working from home i i i, I get to spend time like i, I whatever i want to do in a day it's 
I can set up, set my own schedule and yeah. it's great. But yeah, I mean, it is important to have a routine. It's, it's important. Like if you're going to wake up, as I said, at 5 a.m., it's going to take you a few days to get used to it. But once you do, you probably won't even need the alarm. But what I would suggest is do study, study first thing in the morning or go and work out in the morning. Don't mm -hmm. wait because once everyone wakes up, there's traffic outside, there's this, there's that, there's all these noises. Once at 5 a.m., it's peace and quiet. I'm telling you, like, I feel that whatever I write down at, on, on a piece of paper at 5 a.m., it, it's going to happen because your mind is so receptive at, at that time. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, is that the uh, one thing that you would say that helps the most? Look, I mean, I, I know like some people are, they prefer nights, which is absolutely fine. If you want to work after midnight, that's absolutely your thing. Like we're not all the same and like I, I respect that. But I would suggest that if you are going to study at night or do whatever your routine at night, do it like, again, when everyone goes to sleep, do your study before you go to sleep. Like, but it is important that you stick to it because I have people there was, I don't know, during first lockdown, I believe there was this 21 day meditation challenge on WhatsApp. I believe, I, I, I believe you've seen that. It was like a chain message and it was going around. And I was on a call with a lady who said, oh, it was amazing. It changed my life. It was great. And my only question was, have you done it the 22nd day? And she was like, oh, <laughs> so there you go. See, there was group accountability. You do something for 21 days, but as soon as the accountability is gone, you're gone back to your old self. And that's the paradigm I, I, I spoke about earlier. Mm -hmm. That's why your New Year's resolutions don't stick. And that's if you do want to make this a part of your routine, like do it every day, do it every single day. And then one day when you skip, you'll be like, okay, something feels weird. See, I, I skipped my evening study or my morning study and you will feel weird. Like myself and Yella, we took a break over Christmas now. We took a break 10 days. So no studying. We, we used to wake up at eight, nine. But we, we didn't feel great. I can tell you, like, it was nice to take a break, but also one part of us was missing. Because now we've been doing it for a year and it's it's a habit of ours now. Like, we're just programmed to go and study every day. And look, it's no fight. We don't beat ourselves because we missed study. We're back on track this week. But you'll see that if you read every day for month, two, three, like, and then you skip one day, you'll be like, oh, I miss, I miss my reading. Mm -hmm. And that's, that. It, it is, there's a power of having a routine and I, I would suggest everyone, but build a productive routine. Like don't make yeah. it, yeah. Wake, wake up at six and then watch Netflix for two hours, make it a productive yeah. one. I agree. Um, I, um, I'm sure you heard about Tim Ferriss, the four hour work week. Um, he, I love his suggestion that if you're trying to build a habit and you should, orchestrate everything around it to make the habit more easier to pull out or, or pull through um, where he gives an example for instance if you want to go start running every morning you don't take the shoes and lock them up on the second floor behind the cupboard and two bars no you want to make them you want to put them somewhere where it's accessible so as soon as you wake up you see the shoes you put them on and you start running so you don't have any excuses you don't have time to think about it and um he, he talks about building uh, actually everything around you in a way where it kind of helps you pull out your um pull your habits through i, I don't know why yeah. i'm saying it the wrong way uh but basically um it, it it's hard for people to stick with habits because they haven't arranged everything around them for doing the habits that's a mm -hmm. paradigm that you're you're uh, mentioning there there's of course a lot more to it but um, those are some of the simple steps to uh, take to kind of help yourself around um I, I know that for instance you mentioned the holidays and during holidays everybody eats a lot more and drinks a lot more and all of that uh, i noticed that as soon as you have food a lot more junk food in the fridge you're kind of more inclined to take it you're like oh it's standing there and all it's just why leave it there right and then just eat more um so yeah we we kind of relax during the holidays as well and uh, gained a few pounds of course um but we did notice that we missed the routine um especially um spending time in nature like I, that's a big one for me i love going for walks and for runs um to the forest or valleys and ireland really has some beautiful nature here i really do enjoy it uh but during the holidays, we were at home most of the time or spending time at parents' house, you know, so we didn't go out that much. Um, plus, everything's on lockdown, so uh, we didn't have anywhere to go. And Zagreb is a city, so there's not that many parks. Um, plus, there were the earthquakes, so everyone was kind of shook up from the whole situation. And 
oh man, uh, that, that was the paradigm shift. Like it felt differently. Um, the, the earthquakes that we had in March, we kind of looked from afar since, you know, we were here in Ireland and uh, we watched it through social media and it feels different when you're there. Um, it was actually my first earthquake ever and it's, it's really strange, man. Like everything's moving, everything's shaking and you, you can't, um, I think that's the worst part of it. Like you have a feeling that you can't affect anything. Like personal development gives you the feel that you can affect things and that you mm. can change things. And when something like that happens, you're like, all right, you know, like walls are moving. <laughs> you're like, I really can't do anything about it. Right. Um, so we're kind of like uh, struck by it. And of course, Everything went well in the end. Nothing happened to anyone. So um, everyone was lucky in that aspect. None of our, uh, none of our fr uh, friends and family were hurt. So uh, everything went well, relatively speaking, right? Um, so uh, that kind of affected the, the mindset there a lot. And um, even then, I could see some people really, really panicky. And I, I really think that um, working on yourself gives you even... Um, like something to fall back on even in situations like that uh, at one point it crossed my mind like all right what if the house really collapses now and we are left without anything right it crossed my mind that through this like uh, thinking uh, about how to set your goals and how to achieve them I would manage to build everything back up again and I felt that I wasn't lost and that it wouldn't be like lethal or like it wouldn't be end of the line i think it would take me a long time but that it would be manageable and i am 100 percent sure that if i didn't put in the time and um, effort to change my mind that i would look at the whole situation differently i always think back to you know like stories from tony robbins and people who are in the self-development industry who talk about like the worst things that happened to them in their lives for instance, when they almost had to close the company down because they were in debt, couldn't pay the paycheck for their workers and stuff like that. And then the story of how they pulled it around. I really love stuff like that. And I always try to think back to that. Like it's it's about resourcefulness. And Tony puts it great. It's not like what happens to you. It's what you do um, that, that counts. So I kind of decided to, you know, keep working on, on myself and help other people. Um, achieve their goals and kind of change their paradigms. Um, do you have any big goals for 2021 or big resolutions that you made to kind of change this year or improve? Yeah, I just wanted to say something that what, what you said there that um, this earthquake, which unfortunately happened in Croatia and the whole world heard about it. It was, a, as you said, it was a huge paradigm shift. And it's actually great that you said it because that's one that's there's two ways to change a paradigm. And the one that you said is the negative one that we can't control. It's called emotional impact. So there's people, there's families who lost everything. They lost their houses, they lost their homes, whatever they had. And that really changes your paradigm. That's not the part that we like to focus on in our program. We focus on the other part, which is repetition through studying and all that. And that really changes your paradigm. But I'm glad that you mentioned it. And another thing what you said is uh, this whole mindset that you, you've been working on mindset for the last few years and really helped you in this situation. And I like how Bob Proctor puts it is that you either react or respond. So if you react, that means that whatever's outside, what's hap whatever's happening outside of you is in control. But if you respond, then you're, re you're in control. And that's something that I was very bad with reactions. I used to react to small, stupid things, traffic, people parking outside of our apartment i mean small stupid things it's just when your mind mindset is not strong you react but that's something that i learned over the last year is you need to regain control of your thoughts no matter how bad are things i actually have a great technique like when something really bad happens to you like i don't care it's is it a person a circumstance something really bad what you should do is just say that's good and then instantly find one good thing about it and it really helps like it helps so much like i know the things let's say that person pe people who lost their house they could say okay that's good we're alive we can rebuild the house and i know it's 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 awful thing to happen but look we're alive we'll rebuild the house and so you instantly find one good thing about it that's yeah. something that we we uh, what i've learned during this last year like the attitude and the whole mindset shift but as for my goals now sorry for going off topic a small bit Borna. Uh, yeah, I have a big goal. Like myself and Yelena want to buy our big house in Portugal. 
Uh, we love Ireland, don't get us wrong, it's a beautiful country, but we, since we work from home, we are completely, as in, free to work from wherever we want. So Portugal is where we want to go, and we started looking into houses, so this year should be our, we should, we should buy a house and hopefully buy my Tesla Model S, that's a big goal of nice. mine, so that should be, that, that's my big goal for 2021, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, why Portugal? Uh, it's sunny. Ah. It's sunny. It's, um, I don't know, like we just Google, like I lived in Spain for a few years and even though it's a beautiful country, I didn't really like people. I know this might be like, I'm sorry if I, if there's any Spanish people watching your, um, your podcast, but I just didn't feel, I don't know there was probably too much difference between Spanish people and Croatian people. I just, I mean, I did like my teammates there and I, I loved my life, life there, but just everyday people. I just did just I just didn't resonate with them. And then we kind of Googled um, Portugal. We know a lady who was a client of Declan's who was from Portugal and she was a lovely lady and she said even she knows the difference between Portuguese people and Spanish people. Mm -hmm. And now once lockdown is lifted all the restrictions, we're gonna go there. We wanna spend maybe a few weeks, see some houses, meet a few people just to see. I mean it would it should give us a bigger picture of what's life like there and we, we we did watch a lot of youtube videos on people living there the life is quite affordable like some things are much cheaper than ireland like it was basically a decision between will we go back to croatia or will we go somewhere else mm -hmm. and i honestly i do love i would i like that i have that freedom to go home whenever i want but i don't really want to live in croatia mm -hmm. like i mean it's just the mindset of people there doesn't suit me especially now with what i do I don't want to go around trying to explain to people that I'm I'm doing mindset coaching and this and that. So yeah, Portugal is is our destination, and as I said, it's a big goal of ours now. Obviously, with all the lockdown and restrictions, we'll see what happens. But yeah, it should be should be there. And awesome. Tesla is like Tesla is another another goal, another another big yeah. thing of mine. Uh, I know why I chose a Tesla. I get it completely. That's also one on uh, one of my goals. Um, I talked to a friend of mine called Brendan. He's super into Tesla and SpaceX, and he follows it religiously. He was also on the podcast, and yes, I, I, that, yeah. I asked him um, like, how comfortable is a Tesla car? Because you and I were taller guys, and when I uh, chatted to another friend who was kind of doing car deliveries for uh, different companies, um, he told me like look, man, these like Ferraris and Maseratis, those are not cars for you and me. When you're in there, you're like cramped yeah. in and you don't have yeah. any space, and especially for the legs. Like, you know how it is to travel in public, public transport and even smaller cars. Uh, and so I asked my friend Brendan, like, what's it like for driving a Tesla? He's like, look, man, Elon Musk is a tall guy. He made the car to suit himself. So tall guys like us would love it. And I'm like, all right, cool. You, you convinced me. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was my my concern. Like, I actually booked a test drive for Tesla back in, just before the first lockdown, it was back in February, I believe, or mm -hmm. even early March. And I remember it was my big concern. I, we went in there, I said, okay, I want a test drive. And they were like, I actually booked it online. But uh, they were like, what model do you want? And there was this Model 3, which is, I think it's the newest and it's cheapest yeah. one. So I, I sat in there and it was kind of, you know, it wasn't really, like, I'm 6'11", so I'm a bit extreme. Like, it would probably be perfect for you, but... I said, can I try Model S? And this guy was like, yeah, let's try it. And it was perfect, yeah. So nice. I, I, I set my mind to Model S and it's happening this year. Awesome. Um, I'm sure you read that Elon Musk is building a gigafactory in Berlin uh, that will make Europe get Teslas faster and cheaper. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. They'll, they'll build it, I, I think it's in a year or two. So um, I think it's in a year. So uh your your goal well our goals are, are getting uh, closer and closer by the minute <laughs> yeah i don't know will, will, will i wait till for for a year or two but yeah look we'll see um as i said it, if it happens this year that'd be awesome but yeah. again house would house would be priority definitely if there's mm -hmm. if i have to pick between the two it'll be house like we live in in a, an apartment here in Chile. it's lovely but our family is getting bigger maria is she's over two now she's getting bigger and bigger we need more office space because we we both work from home so yeah like homes mm -hmm. would be would be next logical step got it got it all right um mindset wise is there anything that you want to change for uh 2021 or do you just want to keep doing the things that you already done and what are your plans in the like personal development space yeah 
So what I want to do is we are, like Declan has created this team and there's four of us including and then him. So we, we are studying this material called thinking into results. But what I want to do is I want to take next, I want to take it a step further. So I want to invest again, I don't know, another five year investment this year into my own development. I'm going to start studying a program called Lead Field. So, and that's also about profit stuff. So I do want to, I like I said, by the, by the age of 30, I want to be a millionaire. And I, I'm just going to keep reinvesting in myself because I know that's the way, like I know what, was this one investment has done for me in my life and my wife's life. Mm -hmm. And I know that if I keep reinvesting and taking one step further, one step further is only going to get, yeah. um, it's only going to get better. And I know like for some people that initial investment is not an easy decision to make, but once you do it, it like, it's just going to become a habit. Like we, we invested like, I would say around 20,000 just last year in our, in our own personal development. We're going to do the same this year. And it just happens that way because you, you get it back and, that's 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 my goal. I like I, I do want to have to have a com complete like control and mastery uh, over my thoughts. Yeah, yeah, I agree on that one. Um, all right, one big topic that's on everybody's mind always is uh, money, and it's something that we cannot um, skip in this podcast. Um, I think it's very important how you manage your money, how you approach uh, the topic of money, and even how you think about it. Um, and one thing that I discussed with Alexandra is that the topic of talking about money is still taboo for a lot of people. So I think we should open up that topic and go into that a little bit. Um, tell me, how do you approach money? How, what are your thoughts on it? And do you have any advice for people for the new year or for their lives, how to approach their money situation? Yeah. So it was a huge, like I had this awful money paradigm. That's how we call it. So that's when you have this mindset around money, which is always that you're coming from a place of lack. Well, that was me a year ago. And I remember I was mad at Yelena because she spent 15 euros to attend the, the seminar here, the excellent seminar. I was actually mad at her for spending 15 euros. That's where I was a year ago. And that's, I think a lot of people are going through the same. And what I learned now is I like, I, like, I love money. I love talking about money. And I, I, I don't get people who don't. And I think, as you said, it's still taboo, but that's just because we are raised to believe that it's bad. Money is bad. It's bad talking about money. It's bad to have a lot of money. Like I know in Croatia, like when someone has a lot of money, we think he's either a criminal or he's a corrupted politician wow, or right. this or that. And it's, look, I, I, I grew up thinking that. And then all of a sudden you see that everyone can earn money. Everyone can be a millionaire. But I, I do see why people don't like talking about it. But what I don't like is when I get in a lot of calls and some people say, well, money isn't a big thing for me. Like that's, that's the biggest lie I ever heard. So if you think like our biggest asset is our time, right? And we trade 40 hours and that's like not including the transport time or whatever, like at least 40 hours a week, you trade for money. So like, and you're telling me that money is not important. So why, why do you spend 40 hours at work? So it is important. Like I know that some people don't like to talk about it, but it is very important. Try living without the money for, for a week, like, and see how we get on. So I think there's, there's a lot of great books about mindset. There's actually a lady who studied Bob Proctor's program and she's, she's expert in, in, in money mindset. Her name is Martha Adams. And I'm going to actually study her, her program. Cause I, I, I do want to know everything about it, but yeah, I look, you have, what changed for me is I, I came from a place of, oh, I don't have money. I can't, when I had to make a decision to invest in, in this Bob Proctor material, like I, it was probably the hardest decision of my life because I, I was raised to believe that whatever you earn, just hold to it. It's your money, save it for rainy days and this and that, which a lot of people do. It's, it's the lack mindset. And now all of a sudden I was supposed to invest that hard earned money into my own personal development. It was very unknown concept to me, very hard, but I did step out of my comfort zone. I did it and I'm glad I did. But what I would suggest to every person is look, start getting comfortable talking about money because money is, is mindset. Like that's something that I know, like Bob Proctor, actually, that's, that's a funny thing. Like the first thing, if you, if you go now and you want to work with Bob Proctor, let's say the first question he'll ask you is what's the most you've ever earned. And that's because he doesn't want, he doesn't care what most you've ever earned, but he just wants to know where is your mind programmed with respect to money? Because he says there's a pattern to it. He said the person who's earning 50,000 euros a year, is not thinking the same thoughts as person who's earning a million a year. He goes, there's, there's that pattern. And then he knows straight away, how are you programmed with respect to money? And that's what, 
people don't understand it's literally you are programmed to earn the money that you're earning and if you want to earn more you can easily reprogram like it's not easy but you can reprogram yourself you have to reprogram yourself yeah i agree on that one um i noticed that with um people in companies who earn more than others like in in since i weren't in a few sales companies you would always have one person that earns more than like 70 it's the 80 20 rule like there's a few people that earn 80 percent of the total income of the total of sales right and then the, there's the rest of the company there and they usually have a different very different mindset than all the other people and it's fun to learn from those people because they tell you how they think they tell you what they do differently and I would let's say focus too much on details for every company every customer every client and then after a few minutes of talking to the highest earners you will see that they don't sweat the small stuff they go for the big things and uh when they're not 100 percent sure that something is going to bring them value they just skip it you know they're just like and eh, this is not a good prospect i won't waste my time and then you're like uh-huh all right so they don't go after everything that's thrown at them they don't take every opportunity they only take the best opportunity and i'm like well, all right, I, sh I should start doing that, right? And then I slowly started changing my approach. Um, I think that's uh, invaluable advice, uh, advice for everyone because at first, every concept seems out there far away, right? And uh, after hearing you talk, Dushan, like some people will think like, oh, I can't earn that much money. It's impossible. It can't be done. But it seems that way now. Like after a few years of working on yourself, you can really get there because you change your life, change your thoughts, change everything around you, and then you get different results. And I think that's how it's supposed to be done. Basically, no one was born knowing everything, having everything. Well, there are, there are people who are born with a lot, right? But there are also as, as equally as many people who were born with nothing and worked their way up and earned, you know, like millions and millions of uh, euros, dollars, whatever, right? Um, I also think it's important why you do it like um i think bob proctor asks that question to see also your like blueprint of how you think not just not just the money part but what's the most you earned can be also a question of how you did it and then if somebody you know tricked someone to do it then you kind of know what kind of person he is if he was someone who raised the money to help and orphanage and that's the most he earned because he invested it then mm. that's a completely different approach so i think that's a wise question to ask because you kind of get the background of who the person is um, and i think that affects also as well um, i don't like negative and evil people i prefer you know when the, where, where there's good intent and i always look for people like that and that's why i felt with you and yelena and everyone there so that, that's kind of why where we're here um i think that intent is important um gary Vee puts it nicely like if you help other people it, it will come back you know it's, it's just like how things work um and also you mentioned the secret earlier i feel that um you do attract stuff um, sometimes it doesn't come back directly and right away but after a while like you do feel the effects of it and people who are on the wrong path will kind of have different obstacles than people who are on the right path you know like the universe will just throw them something that mm. won't happen to someone who's on the right path and uh yeah um let's let's stick with money here a little bit what are some of the like best money habits what would you say well i would say that first of all don't always think how you don't have money because that's what you attract like you were talking about attraction and uh be a lot of people are like yeah, this is what I earn and I need to save and this is expensive. I, I, I don't say these words anymore. And I mean, I was born out, I would tell you, like you, if you met me a year ago, I was dirt cheap. I'd be buying everything on sale. And I was, that was who I, that's who I was. That's how I was raised. And that's, that's the first mistake because if you think about it all the time, that's what universe sends you. If you think you have no money, it's, you'll have no money at all. But, and then there was this whole paradigm shift for me where I went from, Yo, earning, I was earning 30,000 a year for years now, haven't moved. And then I, I started, um, I started all studying all this, changed my paradigm, started earning more, but don't, that's, that's my one piece of advice. Don't always come from a place of lack because everyone can have money. Like if you think of Jeff Bezos, like there's, this guy is like 
it's unrealistic how how much money this guy has. And look, there's this old mindset like you can have maybe not as much as Jeff Bezos, but you, we can all have a comfortable life. It's just a thing of mindset. And again, look, there is all great tips about look budget. You know, spend spend uh you know, like have a budget which you're about which your like income and like where your expenses go. But another thing that I would suggest is get educated on how the money works and where to invest it. That's the biggest piece of advice because I had my saving account in the bank here in Ireland. And I remember like, by the end of the year, I had it for a year. There was like nearly 3000 euros on that saving account. And my, I, I got five euros in, in interest. I so I basically it. lost money. Like when you, when you take out the inflation, which is one to 2% a year, I basically lost money for holding my <laughs> saving money in the bank. Yeah. That's where I said, okay, I'm closing my saving account. What is it? Sorry for interrupting there, but then you got the letter end of the year because of 2020 that interest rates are going from 0.1% to zero. So well, you're basically it's actually minus now, I believe. Is it's it like minus it's negative. Or? Yeah, it's negative interest now. Yeah, which is crazy. Look, and I think a lot of people like I started investing in stocks back in April, and I've been doing phenomenal. That I actually, I'm kind of doing it part time. And I also started Forex now, but I think so many people, like we are uneducated about money. And that's because schools don't teach you. You can have a degree, you can have a master's degree in, in economics and not know how to earn money. And people, I don't know, like if I, when I told my dad that I, I started investing in stocks, he was like, oh, geez, what, what is this? Like, why are you doing that? Yeah. So obviously I got disappointed once I got my, uh, my money from the, once I got my statement from my saving account that I was disappointed with five euros on, on 3000 in the saving account. And I said, okay, straight away, I closed it. I didn't want to hear about it. And I, I heard about, like, I was, I was uh, researching about stocks for years, but my mind at that time thought it's only for rich people. It's only for rich business people. Not everyone can invest. And then a friend of mine told me about Revolut. I don't know, like, are you using it? Yeah. It's a free app, download it on your phone, and you can invest stocks there. And I said, okay, I'll give it a try. But obviously, I didn't want to say this to anyone. Like, it wouldn't make sense to tell this, tell my parents about it if I lost money. But what I did is within a week, I made some huge profits. Like, it was probably, I was a bit lucky, a bit beginner's luck. I invested in Tesla uh, back mm-hmm. in April. and It was great. I made huge money. I was happy. I, I told my parents about it. And my dad thought, oh, geez, what is this guy doing? Like, why, is, why are you investing in stocks and this and that? And then when I told him about what is it like to invest in, what is it like to save your money in the bank? compared to investing your money in something else. Like it doesn't have to be stocks, there's bonds, there's all these other things. If, if you think about it, like keeping your money in the bank is the worst way to go about it. And look, if some people don't even have enough money to put aside, that's a bit sad. That's again, that's the mindset part, which they need to work on really hard. But if you do, I would suggest investing into something. There doesn't have to be individual stocks. There's a lot of exchange tracked funds, there are ETFs. A lot of brokers do them now and it's like literally between seven and 10% a year return. And it's like literally safest thing you can do with, with, with your money. Like I, I do, I mean, I, I put more time and effort into it and I learned a lot about it. So I do kind of do it more actively. It's bigger returns, it's also bigger risk. But if even if you don't want to do that, just find a broker that has a very low fees and just reinvest every month leave 50, 100 euros or more if you can and put it into exchange track funds and you'll be surprised how it builds up throughout the years. But like, if you keep it in the, in the bank, it's going nowhere. It's not growing. Yeah. And that's a lot, like people are not, not educated with the money. Like we, I'm pro, I was literally born, I was raised to believe that you need to save that money. But then when I think about it, if I have a money in my debit account, what am I doing? It's just sitting there. I could invest that money and let it grow for, it doesn't have to be years. It could be a month. If you get 5% return a month, Look, ten thousand euros. That's 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 five hundred euros in, in in a month. Yeah, how bad? Yeah, not bad. Um, I feel that most people dream about winning the lottery, but I have I also have a feeling that they kind of don't have a clue what they're going to do with the money. And I have a friend that's exactly like that. He's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna play the lotto. I'm gonna win it, and then I'm gonna do all this stuff. And I'm like, all right, what stuff? And he's like, you know, like, and I'm like, no, tell me, like. <laughs> And uh, I challenged him to give me examples of what he would do. So what he didn't know is basically we were doing a goal setting for becoming rich, but it was more like a dream work where he would imagine the best possible outcomes. 
So uh, he always loved cars and uh, I would tell him like, all right, what color would the car be? And like, all right, where would you buy it? And how would you get it there? And, you know, like make him visualize the process because mm -hmm. I feel that most people have this idea that the lottery, winning the lottery will, will solve everything. But um, research actually shows that people who win the lottery are basically worse off in like one or two years than they were because they can't handle it and they don't know what to do with the money and they don't construct their relationships around it. So they don't know how to handle it when the money comes. And that shows that your point is correct, that it's all about mindset and of course actions that you do. Um, I think it's better to be prepared for it. So when it comes, then not, uh, because if you don't have a plan on how you're going to handle it, uh, you're basically get lost. For instance, if you would, if you were to earn the lottery now, I'm sure that you have 10 steps at least that you would do with your money right away. And somebody who hasn't put in uh, the time and effort to make a plan for themselves, he doesn't. So he would, he would be easily overwhelmed and he would maybe do the wrong um, decision because he would be too emotionally spiked, you know, and then it will be a irrational mm -hmm. decision and money will be spent badly, right? And um, I think that's also a rule that money leaves people who don't treat it right. That's true. And I, I actually, it's funny how you mentioned that because I, I did a live video on it maybe like a month and a half ago, how I read, I read an article how I think 90% or over 90% of the Euro millions winners end up being broke within, I think, a year or two. It's, it's, it's funny. And like right now, I know what the reason behind it is. When you think about like a person who's earning the same amount of money for the last 20 years. So that means when I, I said how you're willing to program to earn X amount of money a month or a year, and that's, that's what you're program, and that's what you're getting year after year after year. And now all of a sudden, someone hands you, I don't know, hundred million euros. Your your mind, you're still that person who is earning, let's say, thirty thousand euros a year. And what's going to happen is, since you're programmed, it's part of your. That's something we do. It's part of your self image. It's like a thermostat. It's going to bring you, you know, like a thermostat in in a room. Like it, it's it, it's it's whole. It controls the temperature of a room. And what happens with these people is that thermostat is set on, let's say, 30,000 a year. And even though you got 100 million now, what's going to happen over time is it's going to bring you back to 30,000. And that's what happens with 90-something percent of people who win the Euro millions. And I think it was Warren Buffett who said that if you come up with a big money all of a sudden, you better become a millionaire here first, yeah. because otherwise you're going you're gonna to waste it. And yeah. that's what happens, unfortunately. And people think, as you said, oh, if I won the Euro millions, like, yet they have no plans. And I love the analogy, like when you said, I, I get on a call with people and I, I, the first thing I like to talk about is their goals. And it's, it's, it's interesting how many people have no goals. And then when I see they're struggling, my, I, I, would straight, I, I would tell them straight away, so if you won the Euro Millions tonight, what would you do? And then they're like, all right. But yeah, it's, it, it is funny, but no, money is mindset. And even I don't care how much you earn overnight. If you don't change your mindset around money, you're going to go back to where you were. Exactly. I also feel that money doesn't solve all the problems. Um, I think Gary has a great point when he says that uh, money shows you more of what you are. So if you're more of one thing, you will become more of it. And it, it, it doesn't feel right when somebody doesn't have any goals or doesn't work on themselves to give them money. Um, and it's not just a lot of winners. Like when you think about actors or sports stars, or superstar, you know, people who gain a lot of money after working for 20 years for a, like a very bad paycheck, and then suddenly they go into the Premier League or Hollywood or something like that, and then they're confronted with millions at a time, they go crazy. And after one or two years of extreme partying, they burn out and they ruin their, their careers. Some people even die. And um, that, that's a great example that even though you have a lot of money, not all of your problems are solved, um, which basically leads me to the whole point of the podcast again, is that you have to work on yourself, on your mindset, on the things that you do and improve constantly. Um, I love how Bruce Lee puts it that life is um, in levels, in plateaus. So at one point you're on one plateau and then it's not like steps all the time, but you go on another level and then you remain there for a while. And I like to look at it like that. And it's kind of easier because when you're looking at uh, steps, it seems to me like there's 
maybe too many little steps and then you don't see the progress or if you're trying to take big steps it's kind of hard so i think the plateau is kind of the best version of it right because you're on one level uh, at a time and then steadily progress uh, forward um Dushan, um i think we covered uh, the the main ideas of this podcast um where we kind of go through sales and social media and mindset and personal development and i really enjoyed talking to you um but i always like to uh, go towards the end of the podcast with uh, something like a motivational message or something positive something that you would like to say to the world um do you have any words for for the listeners of the uncle gold podcast uh make a goddamn decision that's the best best piece of advice i can give to people and i really mean it when you think about how many people can't make a decision and like you, you might say well i can yeah but when was like imagine last time when you asked there now to go for dinner like it's just an example like and you've said well where will we go so you haven't made a decision like let's go here like that's obviously a very basic level of decision making but i think a lot of people can't make decisions about like especially bigger things quit the job all it takes is to make a decision yeah change something about your life all it takes is to make a decision and what i always say it's it's never the money if 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 you want to invest in i don't know like i i didn't have the money to be honest with you like i didn't have enough money to invest in this in this material but i i knew that i wanted so much and i have made a decision that i will change something and i did come up with the money like a few days after that so all it takes for whatever it is i'm not talking about investments now if you want to quit your job and start your own business all it takes is to make a decision but what we do is we 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 think we make a decision we say okay i want to i'm going to quit my job and start my own business but then you say when i earn enough money so that that mean decision was made or i'm going to take i'm going to do this as soon as kids finish school or you know the pattern so that means decision was never made you you said it for a second but you 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 followed it with bought or when or if and that means the decision was made like all it takes like whatever again 2020 has showed us that it's very we can't control outside circumstances like covid happened we don't know what's going to happen in 2021 and it was a tough year for i don't know 90 something percent of people but i mean I, i i have to say that it was the best year of my life both um for my own personal growth me quitting my job, me starting my own business financially. Like, I mean, I work from home. I can go home to Croatia now and work from there, earning like thousands and thousands. Like, it was the best year of my life, even though COVID was there. So you you don't have to be a victim of circumstances. Like, you can change uh, your whole life, but it does take, you have to make a decision. And that's something that if you read the book, Think and Grow Rich, there's a whole chapter on decision. It starts that, like, that basically the, the writer was doing a research of the most successful people in the world like their most common habit was they were making decisions fast mm-hmm. and then all the people like if you think like i think 90 percent of people who have failed have stated that on the top of of the reasons of failure was they lack decision making mm-hmm. and that's something that i i do believe is is vital make a decision yeah i agree on that one man decisions are very important. I'm so happy for you that your business is booming and that you managed to navigate 2020 uh, so successfully and I wish you best of luck uh, with uh, this year of course and the coming years. Um, I, I learned a lot from you man and I feel that you bring a, a very positive attitude and the, the, the can-do attitude and I think we need more of that. Um, I hope that uh, people listening to this podcast will share this with other people because I think it can help a lot. I would also love to have you um, again as a, a returning guest on the podcast, uh, maybe later this year to uh, chat more. And I'd really love to go um, more into the money topic and investing and um, even mentorships, um, because um, this year I'm going to focus heavily on finances and I'm going for financial freedom this year uh, with the channel and podcast and everything around it. Um, so it'll be great to uh, chat about that more. And I hope that everyone listening, uh, you start working on your dreams and start working on your finances and your mindset and everything. As we discussed earlier, <laughs> winning the lottery won't solve all your problems. <laughs> um, I think it's, it's what you do on a day-to-day basis that after a while it stacks up and then you get the results from it uh, after a while. And I would love everybody to uh, approach it that way. Um, Dushan, thank you for being here on the Uncle Gold podcast, man. I, uh, I appreciate it much for taking the time. 
Thank you for inviting me. It was a great experience. I, this is actually my, I think, only second or third podca podcast in my life. But it was the first time that I, I do speak openly about finances and personal development, which was all, 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 of, all of the ones before this was uh, mostly basketball. But I'm glad because I am going through this shift now, as I said, now with the basket, the sport is in a very bad spot now in, in Ireland this year. So there's no basketball training at all at the moment. There probably won't be any soon. Even the sports psychology is, it's not, I, there's, there's not happening. So there's not too much work with that. So yeah, I am mostly focusing on the finances, the stock trading, the Forex and the personal development. So I'm glad that it came at the right time where I'm, I'm focusing my energy on this. And thank you again for inviting me and you're doing a great job. And I, I, I've been a subscriber now for months and I've been following your podcast now for, for, for a year nearly. Thank you, man. Um, I think it's important to spread the good message and the idea and with everything happening in the world, I think it's important to think about stuff that people can do, not, oh my God, this happened to me, uh, changing their mindset into, all right, I'm going to take action and do something towards changing my life. I think internet gives a lot of great opportunities there and um, I love how a lot of people started selling things online like e-commerce and all of that. That's also something useful um, to earn some money on the side. So maybe we can do the second podcast focusing um, heavily on like personal finance and mindset around money and stuff like that. Um, we can prepare a few stuff, a few things for that uh, and I already look forward to it. Yeah, I mean, I would love to talk about it because I said I, I went through a massive shift first with my own mindset, then with my own income. And it is something that I'm passionate about. I read so many books about money, money mindset and all that. So, yeah, look, I, I, I am looking forward. I can maybe give people a few tips on investing, all that. So, look, as I said, I'm very passionate about this topic. I like to talk about money where most people don't. I'm very um, open and honest about it. And I, I don't mind challenging people's um paradigms as i say mm -hmm. when it comes to money like sometimes people say well i can't earn that or i i can't or this this happened or that happened look it, it is always your mindset and I, I don't mind saying that so look it should i i am really looking forward to um doing another podcast only about money and finances awesome uh we'll do it then end of the year um thank you again dushan for being here thanks everyone uh, who stuck with us until the end of uh, the podcast i know it's a little bit longer but uh, as i said earlier i love these uh, long form conversations and i had a great chat with dushan thanks everyone for listening um leave us a comment what you liked best from this podcast what are some of the things you would maybe like to hear more in the part two of this and um i'll leave links below from dushan's uh, profile so you can follow him his website his coaching and everything that he is doing online so you can uh, reach out to him and i'll see you guys in the next podcast thank you for being here thank you the uncle gold podcast